Hey guys, great new tech bike here for you today. We have the fresh off the line GTX 460 video card, which is sort of the evolution of the 480 and 470 cards that we saw released earlier this year. The 460 is a mid-range card priced at only $199 with an entirely new core that should solve the problem of the high heat and high power consumption we saw with the earlier cards. So let's take a look at the technical specs and see what's new. Just a quick side-by-side -side comparison here against the other 400 series cards. What you'll see is the GTX 460 is actually one of the faster cards when it comes to clock speeds. You have the graphics processor and memory speeds just under that of the GTX 480. However, where it balances that out is with the 336 processor cores and only a 256-bit or 192-bit memory bus. It's also made a few sacrifices in other areas of the card. The other thing to take special note of is the TDP, not to be confused with actual power consumption, but the 460 is only pushing up to 160 watts, which means this is going to run a lot cooler and take a lot less power. All right, on to the ever popular unboxing. As you can see, we have the EVGA model of the card. One thing I should mention, this is the 768 megabyte version. There is a second one gigabyte model, which offers a 256 bit memory bus, uh, but it is a little more expensive. So opening it up, we have our EVGA 400 GPUs sticker. Uh, we have the driver CD as well as the user manual installation guide, that fun stuff. This is kind of cool, EVGA is getting away from the plastic clamshell packaging and using recyclable, uh, recyclable paper products, which is kind of nice of them. Uh, we have the HDMI adapter, we have a, sorry, a DVI to VGA adapter, uh, the Molex into PCI Express, uh, the power adapters and that is it we have the card itself so let's open it up pull it out of the packaging here this is kind of interesting it's definitely a lot shorter and the cooler is a lot less uh, a lot less ominous than the GTX 480 with the heat pipes out the side it is quite a bit shorter actually um, what we have with the with the fan here a little bit of a larger fan and there's actually sort of a dip in the cooler if you can see it there um, into the fan so maybe that's for noise to reduce the noise uh, we have the we have the dual power plugs on the back there's not much else exciting about it we have the dual dvi on the outputs as well as mini hdmi and the exhaust point and we have just the single sli bridge that's about it let's fire it up and we'll take a look at the benchmarks To start off our temperature testing, here's our baseline sitting about 32-33 degrees at idle. Room temperature is sitting about 24 degrees Celsius or uh, I believe that's 75 degrees Fahrenheit. So what we're going to do is run it for just over an hour through 3D Mark Vantage there, uh, looping only the GPU test. We're going to see just how hot this thing is going to get. Alright, so I've been looping the 3D Mark Vantage here. Uh, for about the past hour or so, and we're looking at a maximum GPU temperature of just about 62 to 63 degrees. All right, so for our very quick and entirely subjective noise test, we have the camera a little less than a foot away from the video card. It's at 40%, which is the idle percentage, and it actually didn't once go over 40% at any time during the testing. So here you go. We'll present a little bit of a worst case scenario where we bump it up to 50% here. And if it's extremely warm, then we'll bump it up to 60% here. So when you hit 60, it sort of overtakes the noise of your CPU cooler fan, but it's nothing like the mini jet engines that we hear with the higher end NVIDIA and ATI cards. So very good on that front. 
And so there we have it, the quick and dirty on the GTX 460 video card. And you can head over to www.hardwareconnects.com and get the full smorgasbord of benchmarks. But as far as this review goes, the GTX 460 looks like a pretty kick-ass little card. What you get for under $200 is DirectX 11 support, all of the extras, 3D vision, CUDA processing, image quality improvements, and a card that completely destroys its closest competition in games. All I can say is that unless ATI manages to pull something out of their hat in the next few months, this is probably going to be the best gaming graphics card that we see in this price category all year. Thanks for checking out Hardware Connects Tech Bytes, guys, and we'll see you next time.